you got to say right now? With this fire on my backside, I ain't, I ain't worried about nothing right I'm now. I'm curious. What was her response? What, 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 she was just like, I, um, I just had to make sure you hear me. I, saw, I can't remember exactly what mm-hmm. she said, but I just remember <laughs> her trying to talk to me when she giving me a whooping, and that, that doesn't make sense. But I feel like there's a disconnect with the communication. So what it is... Welcome, welcome back to Speaking with Gravity. Yes. Uh, this is the 66th episode. Today we're talking about overcoming adversity, yeah. uh, such a powerful subject, and we'll hop right into introducing ourselves. I'm uh, one of your hosts, Joshua Williams. I've been here for some time now. I uh, want to preface once again, as I always do, I'm not a mental health professional. That's these two folks right here <laughs> beside me that you will get to uh, that'll reintroduce themselves in a second. Um, but I'm not a mental health professional. I just like to talk. <laughs> I just like to talk. And that's all right. Um, and yeah, and I even do that as part of my job, right? Um, but yeah, so definitely want to preface that and, and also want to say, you know, this is a mental health podcast. Please don't confuse it for mental health uh, services. You definitely want to go out and get that on your own. Um, but yeah. So it's going down the line, Miss Hannah. Hello, beautiful people, um, and welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Speaking with Gravity. Um, as Josh mentioned, I am Hannah Williams. I'm a resident of Charlotte, North Carolina, and also um, a mental health professional. So we're so excited to be back with another episode talking about adverse- adversity and some strategies and tools you can use to overcome different types of adversity you may be experiencing. So my name is Terrence Dawkins. I am a licensed independent social worker clinical practice or a licensed clinical social worker. They they get me all confused with these different letters and things. (laughs) Ad libs, this and that. It's the same thing. I'm a therapist. Let's just put it that way, with a a social work background. Um, Based in Spartanburg, South Carolina, but I'm also licensed in North Carolina. And my passion is just to, to help people. Uh, overcome adversity because mm. that's my part of my job as a mental health therapist because people don't come to you when things are good. Mm-hmm. All right. They come to you when things aren't going so well. They want to make some changes and they have some type of negative impact going on in their lives. And I think that really speaks to people experiencing adversity mm-hmm. and then me as a therapist helping them um, see what adversity they are experiencing and then trying to develop some skills and uh, some behaviors that help them overcome it. So adversity, difficulties are misfortune. And this is from Google. Overcoming difficulties are overcoming um, misfortune, mm. which we all experience, you know. Yes, ma'am. Most definitely. So tell me, um, in you all's journey of, you know, doing what you do, right, helping people overcome adversity, what's the challenge for you I want to know in helping folks to overcome adversity because that's adversity right there. Mm -hmm. Can we start off there? I just want to hear from y'all too real quick about that. You want to know? I'm going to pass the mic to you. (laughs) Repeat it one more time for me. Yeah, so in helping people with their adversity and helping people overcome adversity, there's got to be a challenge to you all in there too, right? That's challenging to you. So how do you... Hmm. overcome the adversity of helping people overcome that adversity because sometimes I look at it like in therapy sometimes people can you know they can put up you know uh, barriers Mm -hmm. sometimes they can have problems um, uh, overcoming their adversity so how do you help people uh, being that that's a challenge how do you help people to overcome that yeah so uh, one of the things that I what I took from that was um, for me People ask me all the time, how do you not take your work home with you? Mm. Well, I do a very good job with separating what I do at work from what I do at home. Because if I do not separate what I do at work and what I do at home, it could have it could drive me crazy. Let's mm-hmm. just put it that way. Because I'm always going to worry about what's going on with... Because I work at a university full-time and I have my own private practice uh, part-time. So I'm always going to worry about what's going on with this student or what's going on with this client. And sometimes, yes, we do deal with people who have, you know, suicide ideations. And if I'm taking that home with me, I probably won't sleep because now I'm wondering, is this particular uh, client or student going to harm themselves? And 
what could I have done in order to prevent that? And carrying that type of weight, and I call it burdens as well, mm -hmm. can be so heavy when you have multiple clients or a high caseload and taking all that home with you. So you got to find a way to separate the two, whether that's finding self-care ideas. Uh, for me, it's riding my motorcycle. Um, all right. If, if that, oh, and I'm going to start this new thing. Um, I don't know if y'all heard it. But in Greenville, it's called Drift. Y'all heard of Drift? And the restaurant? No. It's, oh, okay, no. It's, so it's called Drift. Uh, I think it's like Float Spa or something. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's going to be, I mean, you get a massage, you go to the sauna, they have an oxygen bar. Um, how in the world can you sell oxygen? <laughs> it's mm -hmm. possible. That is crazy to me, but that's neither here nor there. But this one thing I really do want to try mm -hmm. is... Um, it's called this float spa. Mm -hmm. okay. So pretty much it's like this egg-shaped contraption with a, with a um, lid on it. And they fill it with water and a whole bunch of Epsom salt. And you just lay in it and you float. And you can close it if you want to, but it's a form of meditation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try that on my next day off for, for self-care. But it's finding cool. things like that that you're interested in, finding things that you, know, you want to learn. And doing those things to really take your mind off what's going on at work so you can separate it. I think for me, and thank you for sharing that, I think for me the biggest challenge in helping other people overcome um, their independent adversity is teaching them or guiding them to, for them to know that they're in the passion, they're in the front seat, in the driver's seat of mm. their healing process. Um, in order to overcome their, your adversity, you have to take responsibility. Um, you have to start this journey. And being the professional, we're just in the passenger seat guiding and assisting. Um, so I think one of the biggest challenges is empowering the person or the client or the student that you have um, or you can learn the tools you need to overcome the adversity, um, which can be challenging. If you're so used to experiencing tribulations or difficulties in life and you've never had that support or you've never had that safe space um, to just, just be present and experience those difficulties, that can be challenging to empower a person um, to, to overcome their adversity. You know what? When you read that definition earlier, those two, you said misfortune and difficulties. Yeah. Those sound like really negative words. Is there a way of looking at adversity from a different perspective? Mm -hmm. uh, like, what does that look like when you look at adversity from a, from a different perspective? I think looking at adversity from a different perspective means looking at an opportunity to grow. Mm -hmm. um, we're all humans. We None of our lives are perfect. We all obviously go through different um, difficulties or different struggles in life. And understanding that we're this is a part of the human experience. Um, we have to learn different ways or different strategies to overcome the situations we experience in life um, in order for our lives to just flow a little smoother. Mm -hmm. And I like the way you put that because a lot of people do think of adversity as this negative thing. Yeah. But it's not always negative. Uh, you know, like we're in 2014. I have to think about that. Oof. You know, uh, we're in 2014 now. So now. 2024. Yeah. Right. <laughs> He took what? us back 10 Come years, y'all. I'm all in college. Man. I was so focused on what I, the story that I'm about to tell you. Okay, okay. Rather than a year. So what happened right. was... Coming live from coming 2014. Live from 2014, but no, 2024 now. But two years ago, I was riding my motorcycle. as this my self-care. Mm -hmm. Got off on the exit, came around the curb. It was nighttime. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, I met me a little friend. While I was riding, this little friend, good friend, I'm yeah, right. this little friend was named Bambi. <laughs> so me and Bambi had an up close and personal meet and greet. And so I went down. The bike started sliding to the right. I started sliding and rolling like a tumbleweed to the left. And it was like, either I'm going to hit something else, or I'm going to stop sliding eventually. But I eventually stopped sliding. But I was okay. I only had a couple of scars on my wrist. Mm. But that piece of Adversity that I experienced while going down on my motorcycle. Because they always say if you ride a motorcycle, it's not if you're going to go down, but when. Mm -hmm. And I went down that day. But coming back off of it, people was like, are you going to still ride? Or my uncle actually asked my mom, I bet you he, he done ride. My mom said, no, he's not. Because in that same night that I wrecked, I was looking for another bike. Because I knew if I did not get back mm -hmm. on that bike, I would never ride again. Mm -hmm. So when 
Two weeks later, when the insurance gave me my money, I already had another bike lined up, and I got me another bike, and I got back on it that that same weekend and uh, two weeks later. But that was because that piece of adversity of me going down on my bike, hitting that deer. If I wanted to overcome it, I had to, like you said, face it, mm -hmm. face it. right? Mm -hmm. And now. It's more of that's me riding that motorcycle helps me be in a sense of community because I ride with friends and it helps me, you know, go to different events with these people mm -hmm. and, and connect with these people. And like I said before, that's part of my self care. And then, of course, there's nothing wrong with finding other self care ideas, mm -hmm. but that was a, such a huge part of what I enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. That if I didn't overcome that adversity, then I would have to try to find something else to do that self care with. Yeah. Terrence, you made me think of um, a quote that I already wanted to share with you all, but just from you speaking about like your um, falling off your bike, your micro motorcycle, Serena Williams said a famous quote about never giving up. She said, I really think a champion is defined not by their wins, but by how they can recover when they fall. Mm. I love that. I love mm. that. Because I got another story about when I fail. Okay. <laughs> I don't... It, Listen. This adversity. That's well. adversity. I'm, I'm getting get this year right. 2024. No, 2020 oh. was, uh, was a tough year. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you that now. Um, my grandma passed. My uncle had passed. And then 2021 was even worse because that's when I had my motorcycle wreck. And then once you hit 30, things go downhill. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> so uh, be prepared. I was playing basketball on defense, just pushed off to go uh, play, you know, defend. Mm -hmm. And I think I set myself up for this because they came down uh, down the court and they said, hey, you got to guard him. He can shoot. So in my mind, I said, I'm going to lock him down. That's exactly what I said, but I didn't say that out loud. <laughs> but they're passing the ball. I pushed off to go play, uh, play defense, popped my Achilles. Oh, man. So I said, oh. That's, I literally made that sound. <laughs> and I hit the ground. I was like, somebody kicked me. But nobody sound like Usher me. over here. That's exactly what I did. And I can't sing, so, <laughs> hey. Um, and that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll be Usher. Y'all saw them cappers up <laughs> oh. in the Super Bowl? Y'all saw that? <laughs> I didn't see that. No, Y'all no, no. seen them cappers up there strong, uh, doing that thing no. on the Super Bowl? I saw them. You seen it? I saw them. I'm a capper. Member of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity. I saw them. All right. Shout out, gonna, shout out. We're not going to go that far. But what happened was I did tear my Achilles, mm -hmm. and I... People take small things for granted, such as putting on your own clothes, mm -hmm. taking your own shower, being able to drive yourself, and all those things I had difficulty with because of tearing my Achilles because I was non-weight bearing for weeks. So that was another piece of adversity I had to overcome. So when you said when people, it's, it's about how they recover when they fall, mm -hmm. I legit fail twice, but it's all about how you looked at it and how you was like, this is going to make me stronger as a person. I think... In my personal experience, um, an adversity that I had to overcome was school. So graduate school, um, as you all know, can be very challenging. School period can be very challenging, whether mm -hmm. it's undergrad, high school, middle school, whatever you know level you're on. School can be challenging um, because you're learning and you're growing more as a person mentally and in other ways too. So for me, grad school was. Um, it was a huge challenge. It was a huge adversity for me. And in order to overcome this adversity, um, one strategy I used was just reaching out to the people I love to support me more. So I recognized in undergrad, I didn't really have the support that I wanted. And it impacted me emotionally. I wasn't able to be present um, in my studies like I wanted to because I didn't have the people behind me rooting for me like I expected them to. So as I approached grad school, I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Like, this is serious. Something got to change. Mm -hmm. And it started with me communicating to the people I love, like, hey, I need you all to be more present. I need some more motivation. Um, you know, these these are things that I need and these are things I want. Mm -hmm. And how can you all help me get through this phase in my life, get through this um, adversity or this challenge in my life? Um, but I had to communicate first to the people I love to even support me. So back to that quote that... Um, a champion really isn't defined by their win. They're defined by how they fall and they're able to get back up. We mm -hmm. all fall down. Um, we all experience some type of adversity or challenge. <laughs> I thought you was about to take us to church. Stop, stop, <laughs> Man, we, got, we got all the references for y'all today. I knew, I knew what he was saying. <laughs> but we all fall down. Um, it's just a matter of how we get back up. Um, that process, what that process looks like. 
since the Super Bowl was most recent. I know I I mentioned the halftime show. But you got to think about this. Like you said, a champion Mm -hmm. is not about the times that they were unsuccessful or follows by how they recovered. Besides uh, USC, Columbia's women's basketball team, because they're dominating right now. I'm a minor. I'm a minor. <laughs> they is Ooh, dominating Shout out right to them. Now. Shout out to Besides them. them. what team has been undefeated but still won, you know, their championship, whether that's the NBA or NFL, right? Some teams have been, you know, it, it's rarely seen, but some teams have lost mm-hmm. a game, at least a game, and but they still didn't stop them from becoming a champion. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Facing that adversity of losing and facing that adversity of oh we're not perfect mm-hmm. right because you know 23 and 0 or whatever not being perfect and that piece of adversity coming back from that winning the championship that's why it means so much to those guys or those girls or women um when they're playing these different sports and games mm-hmm. those losses mean a lot they do right mm-hmm. they, they mean a lot um a lot of the sports teams that i've seen uh, that they might have been perfect throughout the season. Then they got to Super Bowl or got to the championship or whatever, and they got beat. The beat. And the, and, the, and the team, and a lot of it, I think, is because you need that loss sometimes to learn from. To learn from. I've never learned anything from quitting. That's one thing for sure. And I definitely learned a lot more from losing, probably, mm-hmm. than mm-hmm. I did from winning, yes. right? right? I learned what I needed to. Because when you win, sometimes you get caught up in the moment, right, of, hey, hey, I won. But when you lose, it's like, okay, now I have to reflect. So mm-hmm. adversity causes you to reflect, mm. causes you to reflect. I At like least it has that. for me in my journey. And um, in both of you all's stories, um, I just think about what if Terrence wouldn't have got back up, right? What mm-hmm. if he wouldn't have got back up from that motorcycle? He wouldn't have went on to be in the group that he gets um, he gets fulfillment from, right? Mm-hmm. What if you had, you know, stopped... Um, like dropped out. Yeah, yeah, dropped out, right? You, you wouldn't have seen your family or your friends, whoever end up coming to bat for you when you asked for it. Right. You know, when you told them, hey, this is mm-hmm. what I need. I need to see you here. Um, and and what, what comes to mind to me is resilience, mm-hmm. right? Adversity is like a, it's like a, uh, they're looking at each other. Adversity and resilience, right? Uh, you're going through something, you're going through adversity and resilience is over here on the other side saying, hey, when you do fall, <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm here to, to help you get up, to motivate you to get up. Mm-hmm. And um, so resi- resilience is, I think, such a big thing. Um, and just to feed yeah. off of that, I think that resilience, that level of resilience, um, it allows us to understand so much about ourselves. So in a place of adversity, in my opinion, I feel like that's when we understand who we truly are in our true colors. When everything is sweet mm-hmm. and good, oh, you know, we're out here having mm-hmm. a ball, living our best life. But when things are so. ugly and, you know, we, we might have no money in our pockets or we may not have support around us, we may not feel um, a sense of peace, that's when we see our true character and our true morals. Um, and in those places of adversity, we learn so much about ourselves. Mm-hmm. What's, what do we like about ourselves? Um, what do we like about how we handle stress or how we cope with stress and what can we change Mm -hmm. how can we adapt um during this situation so then the next time we experience some some type of adversity or some type of major challenge in our life what can we uh, apply from the last situation to this situation to just move through it a little better definitely my mind is over here just going really going and i i'm really trying to figure out how i want to word it but i'm just gonna go for it Mm -hmm. go for it please yeah when you mention resiliency, yes, sir. I identify as a black male, mm-hmm. right? And you look like I one. think I look like one, don't mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> But that's not always the case. You know, we, ain't gonna, we ain't gonna talk about that. But what happened? What I think is, and I spoke about this on the previous episode. Like I said, I'm real big on this thing called intergenerational trauma. Yeah. So our ancestors experienced a lot of adversity. Mm-hmm. They did, yeah. Uh, with you know slavery, with you know Jim Crow, segregation, mm-hmm. oppression, uh, marginal marginalization, all that stuff, mm-hmm. they had to adapt in order to survive. Mm-hmm. They had to do a lot of adapting because if you were to show emotion or show some type of weakness, you had some type of probably fatal consequence mm-hmm. or punishment or separation. If you were to talk back. Or um, you know, say no. There was some type of consequence mm-hmm. for that. So we mm-hmm. had a lot of um, a, 
we had to adapt to a lot of things, and these adaptations that were then beneficial then aren't really beneficial now because we've, mm-hmm. we've lost the meaning behind it. And what I mean by that is, I know last episode I talked about, um, you know, make sure you're home before the streetlights come on. Um, but it is, I remember this one that's coming to my mind is, do as I say, not as I do. Mm-hmm. I remember that. So your parent could tell you one thing, like you need to make sure that you show respect to your elders, you need to make sure that you follow <laughs> these different uh, rules and regulations or whatever it is. But then they would do the total opposite. But they're trying to teach you that what they're doing is probably not the right thing, but they're trying to tell you the right thing. But what parents sometimes forget is kids are smart. We don't, Mm -hmm. and when you're younger, you can't make sense of a lot of things because your brain isn't fully developed. That's the therapist coming out of me. But we ain't going to get that far into it. But what we do understand is if I see you do it, I'm probably going to do it too. But then the parents get mad at us. Mm. Right, so our ancestors came up with a lot of ways to adapt to their living situations, the living environments, and we try to carry some of those over to now, but we have to find new ways to adapt because our ancestors built that resiliency so that we could carry it on today. And more so, they built that, they adapted in the way they did to survive. Mm -hmm. When you're in survival mode, um, you tend to adapt in negative ways or you're influenced um, to do more maladaptive behaviors, which we've already spoke on, like smoking, drinking, um, using sets or gambling to mask what you're really going through. Um, However, we're able to grow and prosper so much when we don't resort to that, um, those maladaptive ways. And on the opposite side, we learn to adapt and we grow um, and we come out of that place of survival. Mm -hmm. Survival mode, I'll say. Uh, Survival mode, that's a... That's a tricky thing. Mm-hmm. Tell you, your brain will play tricks on you. That's all. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Your brain yeah. will definitely play tricks on you. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, you know, I feel as though um, for folks that's going through adversity, sometimes the uh, the thoughts are lean towards, okay, when is this going to end, though? Mm-hmm. You know, this challenge right here that I'm going through, when, when is it going to, when am I going to be through with this adversity, right? Mm-hmm. What um what advice could you give, you know, for someone who's who's going through adversity? Um, just what advice, what what tips could you yeah. give? Yeah. I would say that whatever we overcome in our personal lives, the adversity we overcome in our personal lives, it impacts us on so many levels. So if we're able to overcome um, an insecurity on a personal level, that can impact us positively in our professional and career um, places and our professional relationships. So the work we do personally, it impacts us on so many different levels, um, whether that is in the professional aspect or with our family um, or with our friends. So, yeah. Uh- would like to have another small little quote. I'm a big fan of quotes, by the way. I love quotes, too. Um, I'm here for it. Please, throw them. Throw them. What I'll tell them is people that's <laughs> trying, that's overcoming adversity or experiencing adversity, is it did not start with you, mm-hmm. which is a title of a book, a great, very great book. Uh, if you get a chance to pick it up, definitely do. It's called I've It Didn't Start it. With You. Um, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. And it's, but I tell them that because... We think when we're in the middle of something that it's just us by ourselves and we're the only one that's going through it. Mm -hmm. But that's not necessarily the case. And what we have to remember is there's people that have been through similar things before that before we have that can help guide us through. So that goes back Mm -hmm. to, you know, you said you leaned on your family in order to try to get you through grad school. So finding that support system to help you through it. Uh, realizing that you're not alone and understanding that what you're experiencing, I'm pretty sure your parents probably experienced, maybe your grandparents experienced, maybe like the same exact situation, but it's not about the situation. It's about the impact that that situation is having on you. Mm-hmm. You know, the stress, the depression, the anger, the frustration, the irritability, whatever it is that you're experiencing, your parents have experienced that same type of feeling or emotion. Mm-hmm. Your grandparents have experienced that same type of feeling and emotion. So leaning on them or some other person that you trust, some other caregiver, whoever that might be, leaning on them to help guide you through it and realizing that just because you ask for help doesn't mean that you're weak. 
Mm-hmm. Just because you ask for help doesn't mean that, you know, you just have to do it on your own. But then people will say, well, I asked for help before and nobody showed up for me. Right. And I understand that. But just because this one person didn't show up doesn't mean everybody's not going to show mm-hmm. up. So you have to give people opportunities to show up for you to help you get through these tough times. And when we're overcoming adversity, in my personal experience, I have to remember to give myself grace. Mm. So not to be so rigid and tough on myself um, when I make a mistake. Don't beat myself too. Don't beat myself up too much about it. But just give myself grace um, to to overcome that difficulty um, or to overcome that difficult situation. So yeah, grace is very important. I'm, I'm real big on patience, y'all, and um, reason being is because that's something that I had to develop over my life <laughs> to deal with so many different things. So, um, so yeah, going through adversity, you know, part of the reason I guess I could have asked that question was because, you know, there were times when I'm like, wow, well, when am I going to get out of this, right? When am I going to get out of this challenge? But looking back, that patience that was being built up by going through and by being intentional and overcoming adversity in my mind, I knew it was going to be something else after that, right? Mm-hmm. It was going to be another challenge. There's going to be more adversity after that, right? And so that patience that was built up kind of bled over into my next challenge mm-hmm. and then into my next challenge. So I want to encourage people to stay in that adversity, right? Get what you can out of it because it is it's building that patience up in you, yeah. right? You're developing patience, um, and developing resilience, like we mm-hmm. talked about earlier, so that as you continue to face these face these trials and whatever that you're facing in adversity, you know you will have the power already, right, to overcome it. Um, yeah. So I think that's really important too. And um, you know, I feel as though sometimes when we're in our storm or in our adversity, we'll say, um, we'll say, uh, well, I know. You know, I can handle this, but if this come, I can't. I don't know about this. I don't know about yeah. this. But don't put those limits on yourself, though. Don't put those limits on yourself. Um, that adversity, that challenge wouldn't be coming to you if there was not on the other side of it uh, the power for you to overcome it. So, mm-hmm. the um, tools. yeah, yeah. So you got to continually yeah. be encouraging yourself, and I think your um, that's where your circle also comes into play, right? Mm-hmm. Having a po- having positive people around you. You know, who are you locating yourself around? is uh, so important because some, some people, you know, they're going through their adversity and, and they don't know how to, they don't know how to uh, address their adversity. Mm-hmm. And you, you looking at them, like uh, look, looking at how they, uh, the behaviors they're exhibiting and that's not going to be healthy for you at all. So being around people who can, who can help pull you up a little bit. Definitely. Yeah. I like, go ahead. You go ahead. You go ahead. I like what you said and I thought about um, like when we're going through in adversity, there's always a lesson to be learned. Mm-hmm. Like you said, you you have learned patience from the different um, lessons you've had, from the different experiences you've been through. But there's always some type of lesson to be learned. And what I've what I've discovered in my personal journey is that when I don't learn a lesson during one period of my time, it doesn't go away. I have to mm-hmm. go through something more intense and. Mm-hmm more emotionally draining um, or something more that hurts more. Come on, yeah. Before mm-hmm. I learned that lesson, so let's be smart here. The sooner you learn the lesson that mm-hmm. this adversity wants um, you to learn, that this difficult situation wants you to learn, you're able to have that. You're equipped with whatever virtue or whatever characteristic that you're supposed to gain, and now you can apply it to different situations in life. So if you struggle with patience, um, you're going to keep going through different situations in life until you build that level of patience. Like, okay, you know, let me be chill. Let me be patient. Um, And until you learn that, life is just going to keep tossing more situations at you um, until you learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and kind of what you were going off of. Children are smart. I keep saying children because I firmly believe that our childhood experiences shape who we grow up to become. They shape our, a lot of our behaviors. Yes, they shape how we respond and react to certain situations. And but children are very smart. Mm-hmm. They watch and pay attention to everything. So as a caregiver, parent, family member. If they see you not being able to handle that adversity, mm. 
they're going to say, well, when something tough comes, this is how I'm supposed to do it. Yeah. So why people can't handle adversity is because they were never taught how to handle mm-hmm. adversity. Yeah. And that go- plays a key part in, well, if I wasn't taught, that means my parents or caregiver wasn't taught, mm-hmm. which means their parents or caregivers weren't taught. So there's, I believe, this disconnect sometimes mm-hmm. with this being able to teach children uh, how to handle adversity. And a lot of that comes with communication because I can remember sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes, and I ask my mama this all the time, I say, why do you talk to me when you're giving me a whooping? I, I, I hate that. Like, I'm not paying attention what to anything say? you say. Didn't I tell yeah, yeah. you? I'm not paying attention to nothing you got to say right now. With this fire on my backside, I ain't, I ain't worried about nothing right I'm now. I'm curious. What was her response? What, 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 she was just like, I, um, I just had to make sure you hear me. I, saw, I can't remember exactly what mm-hmm. she said, but I just remember <laughs> her trying to talk to me when she giving me a whooping, and that, that doesn't make sense. But I feel like there's a disconnect with the communication. So what it is, is I'll get a whooping. Mm-hmm. And only thing as a kid I know is I just did something wrong. But it was a lot of times, and sometimes what happened was she never told me what exactly I did wrong and why it was important that I did not do that mm-hmm. and what I can do instead. That mm-hmm. lesson. The lesson piece was lesson. disconnected. Mm-hmm. I just know if I go to school, and I talk in class, I'm probably going to get a whooping. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know why not talking in class was important. Maybe I disrupt other people. Maybe because, you know, um, you know, the teacher can't teach. And and this could be a whole bunch of different things. That's just a small example. But it was all because that lesson part was missing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you were to incorporate that back, incorporate the lesson part, why you did what you pretty much why I did what I did as far as uh, disciplining you or giving you a consequence, what you actually did wrong, mm-hmm. and then what and why that was wrong, but also what you can do to in the future to make sure that this doesn't happen again. That conversation powerful. piece needs to happen. Yeah, that's, that's that's powerful because you end up as a person that's learning from adversity. You end up I don't want to say looking forward to adversity, but when you get to that storm. You have more confidence built up, and you know I'm going to get something from this, mm-hmm. too. Exactly. This is not it's just not going to take away from yeah. me. Instead yeah. of being scared. Yeah. Because yeah. I was scared. I ain't going to lie. I'm terif- I was terrified of my mom. Because uh-huh. every time I got in trouble, like, adversity, something negative would happen. Mm-hmm. So I knew adversity come negative. That's kind of like what I associated it with. Mm-hmm. But if the lesson piece was into it, it would be like, okay, yeah, I messed up. I get mm-hmm. it. But then I got something can from grow. it. I can grow yeah. from it instead of... Yeah, this hurts a little bit, but in 30 minutes, I'd be all right. Yeah. So there has to be a mind shift, y'all, mm-hmm. from from this is just hurting me, right, to this is teaching me something. Yeah. Exactly. And we've got to be looking for the lessons, you mm-hmm. know, as a as as individuals and as a people, I feel like, as yes. a culture. Mm-hmm. You know, we got to be looking for the lessons in our struggle, yeah. in, in our adversity. Yep. So to add to that, um, I feel like it's so important to identify how do we respond to trauma Mm. um, or how do we respond to adversity. Like you said, in your situation, Terrence, um, it was negative. It, It you knew that if you got in trouble, you were going to, the consequence was going to be a whooping mm-hmm. um, and not a lesson. So some trauma re, um, responses I just want to um, mention is f- fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. Hmm. So you all may be familiar with the fight or flight um, responses to how humans interact or respond to trauma, but there's other ones. So f- fight means that um, when we're when we experience something adverse, we want to be angry. We want to be controlling. We want to be narcissistic. We want to be the bully. Um, that may sometimes look like whoopings. Flight means that we want to escape our adversity. So we want to leave. We want to um, become a workaholic. We overthink. We mm. may have um, a panic attack or we may have difficulty sitting still. Perfectionism. That looks like the flight response. Freeze 
literally. We freeze when we experience adversity. Um, it's difficult for us to make decisions. Um, we're stuck. Sometimes we become isolated or numb and then fawn. Um, this more so looks like someone that may be a people pleaser. When they go through adversity, they want to um, seek validation from other people or they lack their own identity. Mm. Um, no boundaries, codependent, become overwhelmed. So when, when you, the next time you go through, or if you're going through something um, in adversity or a challenge right now, think about how are you responding you respond? to this adversity and how can you improve? If you... Um, if you, if you identify with one of those four responses, how can you improve um, to cope with this the situation a little better? That last one you said was fun? Fun, yeah. Okay, okay. I hadn't heard of that one, but I, I mm-hmm. think maybe uh, sometimes in the past, maybe I could have leaned toward that a little bit, like want to please people mm-hmm. in that, um, or maybe, maybe it's even, you Lack know. Lack of identity, no boundaries, overwhelmed, codependent, people yeah, pleaser. Yeah, yeah, wanting people to... Um, like if I'm, I guess if I'm going through something, I feel like maybe I'm not enough, so I need validation from other people. It's, that's mm-hmm. kind of it makes, okay, it makes yeah. us feel like we're not going through the situation that we're really going through. Mm-hmm. Um, if people are around us telling us, "Oh, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be, it's gonna be okay. This whooping is going to, you know, it's, suffice it's, and yeah. and teach you the lesson." It's not. It's not. And it, our healing has to be more in depth. Um, and it's explaining that lesson, I feel like it's so important. Mm-hmm. And this is across all ages. So you gave the example of parenting um, a child, but as adults, we have to reparent ourselves, mm-hmm. um, which is a phrase you all can do a little more research on, um, you know, outside of this. But we have to reparent ourselves to teach ourselves those lessons that need to be taught um, while we're going through a challenge because nobody is going to teach it to us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when you say the, the reparenting piece, a lot of times I think we as people, when we go through adversity mm-hmm. or when you go through trauma, we forget those lessons or we never taught, excuse me, never taught those lessons. Mm-hmm. But the one person that we absolutely need that we forget because we always look if look for another person to satisfy some type of void yeah we always go to certain uh a different type of relationships to try to fill a void Mm -hmm. right but the one person we forget about that the only person we need is ourselves we have to look at ourselves to be like what is it that i need i need someone to love me but you're looking for love from other people but you don't love yourself Mm. Mm. Oh, I just yeah. want to be comforted. Well, you want someone else to comfort you, but you don't know how to comfort Come yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that is very powerful that the only person, and I'm not saying you don't need relationships and things like mm-hmm. that because we are people or we build a connection in order for us to survive. We have to have right. these different relationships. Interactions, right? yeah. But what I'm saying is in order to heal, what we talked about last episode, in order to heal, we have to remember that we can't forget that we can be the person that we need for ourselves, and we don't always have to look for other people to fill those voids for mm-hmm. us. That's a great point. That's a great point. Yes, it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because I do different... I mean, I'm, lic- I'm licensed therapist, but I use different therapy modalities or therapy techniques. Let me say te- techniques. So sorry about that. But therapy techniques in, with my clients. And one of the techniques uh, would be internal family systems. Um, but really what happens is in that particular therapy, we talk to our inner child. Mm-hmm. Okay? And when we talk to our inner child, the one person that they say that they saw or that they see is a younger version of themselves. And like, oh, what did they what did that person need? Oh, it just needed me. So that's all you hear, like mm-hmm. repeatedly. But you know, I, I think that is very cool that when we do talk to our inner child and try to repair in ourselves, it's a younger version of ourselves. And the only thing that that person was waiting on was you to come mm-hmm. give it what it needed. In in the healthiest way possible. You mm-hmm. know, you can be present for yourself, but is it healthy? So we have to, and I, you know, speaking to myself, I had to learn how to show up for myself wholeheartedly and authentically um, and be there for myself, self-care, just to overcome, learn how to overcome adversity. We got we got a little bit more time left, so we can kind of just um, kind of throw some stuff out if, if y'all want to. I know 
Uh, one thing that was kind of coming to mind uh, for me is uh, just thinking about your journey and adversity, where it lies in your journey, right? It's going to lie at many different points in your, in your journey. But uh, adversity is there. It's going to be there. But ultimately, I feel as though it's there uh, to help you to prove yourself, right, and to improve yourself throughout your journey. You never want to be still, mm -hmm. right? If you still, then you probably going backwards, right? So if you are being met with adversity, then it means that you're more than likely on a path to growth. And in, and encouraging yourself is 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 to me so becomes so so much more important at, at that point. And I also want to uh, say, you know, if if you're at a point where you're where you're thinking, okay, am I enough? You know, this thing that I'm going through, do I really have what it takes? Um, you know, am I? You know, do I have the? And, and I mean, sometimes people go through adversity. It could be mental. It could be, uh, could be on the football field. It could be whatever it is. It's mm -hmm. it's, it's all the same though. And you know, I, I say just remember if you're thinking, do I have the skill? Do I have the talent to get through this? Sometimes it's, you know, just continuing, right? Mm -hmm. And knowing that sometimes hard work beats talent mm -hmm. too, right? right? Hard work beats talent. When you're willing to work on yourself, right? When you're willing to go through it, having a willing mind, that does wonders for you, right? Because it, 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 tells, it tells you, right, no matter what I face, I'm, I have this faith that's unwavering. I know I'm going to come out on the other side. Mm -hmm. So... Um, just reminding yourself that uh, that you know I got to work through it, right? It's it's a journey. Um, it's really important. Mm -hmm. Sounds Did good. Did y'all have some some thoughts y'all wanted to lead these great folks with? I I just think for me it's more of just don't forget about yourself. Mm -hmm. Like I said before, you can be the comfort that you need. You can be that void for yourself. You know to feel that, um, and that really starts with self care. That mm -hmm. really starts with awareness. So instead of seeking it in different behaviors, uh, different people, just remember that you can be everything that you need for yourself. That's a good point you made. And the point that I want to leave with you all is that um, adversity comes in our life for a reason. Mm -hmm. And we just got to learn the lesson. Mm -hmm. We just got to learn the lesson. Um, don't run from adversity. Face it. Face those challenges. Be present. Feel it. Um, Reach out to the support system, the individ individuals you need, but also look at yourself. Look at yourself to overcome that. Most definitely, most definitely. Uh, adversity, suffering, it's an ingredient, mm -hmm. right, to your perfection, to your establishment, to your settlement, to your grounding. So uh, so hang in there. Stay in there with it. Um, again, you got wanna, this. You got it. You got mm -hmm. it. Uh, again, you know, y'all know where to find us. We are speaking with gravity uh, on all platforms. At speaking with gravity, definitely on those platforms like TikTok, um, Instagram, uh, Instagram, and all of those. Um, so reach out to us for questions and whatnot. And then also, uh, you know, you can reach out to us individually as well. You can find me at uh, at Garvey, the number four press. Yes, you can find me at Hannah Elise two underscores on Instagram. And I'm going to make a correction. Last episode. I got my handle wrong because I just changed it. <laughs> it's Instagram at Terrence, T-E-R-A-N-C-E -E underscore Dawkins mm -hmm. on Instagram. So Terrence, T-E-R-A-N-C-E -E underscore Dawkins on Instagram. And y'all, we love conversation. We want to hear how this podcast has helped your life. Um, we love those interactions. So, mm -hmm. you know, send us a DM, reach out to us. We love having those interactions with any and everybody. Um, we're here to help our people, our community. So, yeah. That's right. All right. We'll see y'all soon. See you next episode.